Hey folks, what's happening out there? This is Mario. Thank you for joining me here in the green room in Buffalo. Hey, listen, a couple years ago, I had the idea of putting together a music vlog. And really, the purpose of the vlog would be to talk about everything you see behind me, my gospel music collection. Well, today, September 5th, 2020, is a special day in the history of music, Christian music. Because today is a day that in 1975, a brother by the name of Bill Sprouse Jr. went home to be with the Lord. Bill Sprouse Jr. was the lead singer for a band called The Road Home, who had a couple years of, uh, of ministry within the gospel music community at the time. Later, of course, we know that gospel music turned into contemporary Christian music, CCM. And so today I want to just take you on a little stroll through some Christian history, Christian music. And I'm really excited about what I've got here because today we're going to take a look at this bootleg cassette that I have of The Road Home from 1973. I'll tell you a little bit about how I got a hold of this and uh, just share some of the music of The Road Home with you. Again, all because I just want to be able to share some stuff about gospel music. I got a lot of vinyl, I got a lot of CDs, cassettes, and I figure I better do something with it and do something with my life in regards to it, right? So anyway, hey, let's get this started. Uh, let me just share you a little bit about, about the band called The Road Home. The, the band Road Home, The Road Home, was a band that, uh, that actually only had one record deal, and it was on a non-Christian music label, ABC Dunhill Records. Their first album, Peaceful Children, came out in 1971, and here's a copy of the vinyl that I have here. Uh, kind of cool story here. I found this vinyl randomly in California one day when I was shopping around at thrift stores and stuff, and uh, you see Bill is there in, in the background, and uh, immediately um, I knew the name of the band, The Road Home, and I knew that Bill was a big guy, and, um, and, and as I looked in the album here, you can see there he is. He's labeled here under Willie, but that indeed is Bill Sprouse Jr. Uh, like I said, this, this album is from 1971. This was a non-Christian album, and some of the themes on this album have to do with love and peace and harmony. And this was actually produced by a very um, successful uh, production uh, duo. If you know the song, The Rhinestone Cowboy, uh, the, the guys who helped produce that song were actually the ones who produced this album by The Road Home. And so one of the unique things about Peaceful Children album by The Road Home is that only three of the songs were written by the actual band members. The rest of them were written by those, those producers. So on this particular album of Peaceful Children, only the title track is written by Bill Sprouse. Uh, the second album that we've got uh, today looking at is, uh, is going to be this compilation album released by Maranatha Music in 1973. And this is where you find the song that we're listening to right now, Since I Met Jesus. You can see on the back here, there's a picture of Bill right there. And then up here on the top, I believe that's Phil Alardo. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, how I know that in a minute as we get to it. But this is, like I said, Maranatha 4, released in 1973. Has uh, one of the first songs released by The Road Home at the time. And uh, we've got a couple other things here we'll take a look at. So the next, this next album you're going to see is another compilation album. And uh, this is actually Maranatha 5, which was released in 1975. And here we have a really cool album cover of a couple angels at a soda shop listening to the jukebox. And as we flip that over, there's the playlist on the jukebox. But uh, what really happens here is as we look into the inside of this album, uh, you'll notice that there's some liner notes here. And uh, what we find here is that Bill Sprouse and The Road Home are credited with one song, that song being Psalm 5 on this album. And this story tells how Bill wrote that song and several weeks after recording it, passed away. And so the song was unfinished. And so what the Maranatha artists did is they gathered around uh, in the studio and put lyrics and the rest of the instrumentation to it. So a pretty cool story relating to that song. Um, song 5 is very popular. It's a very popular praise song. Uh, we will get, to, um, we'll get to that song in a little bit when we get to the bootleg because there's a version of it on the bootleg itself. Uh, so we'll do that. But uh, the next tra next album we want to look at that includes songs by by Bill Sprouse at least not necessarily The Road Home is this one right here Shotgun Angel by Daniel Amos. 
And that title track is written by Bill Sprouse himself, Shotgun Angel. Of course, this was released in 1977 by Daniel Amos. And at that time, Bill had already gone home to be with the Lord. But that title track, nonetheless, uh, is an important um, song in the history of Christian contemporary music as we know it today. If you take a look over my right shoulder, you'll see that there's an album on the receiver back there. And that is the album God Loves Country Music. And that album, the title track, is also written by Bill Sprouse. However, uh, as far as I know, there is not a recorded version by The Road Home or by Bill. We'll get to that in a minute, too, because there is a recorded version on the bootleg that I've got with me. So anyway, just a variety of records here written by um, uh, songs, at least, written by Bill Sprouse and performed in different areas by The Road Home. Uh, if you're interested in listening to Peaceful Children, you can actually Google that. There's actually, um, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of songs are all Google. You can just check them out on YouTube. They're there. But uh, there's a couple couple albums there that include songs by Bill Sprouse and The Road Home. But like I said, what we're doing here today is we want to we want to take a look at some of the uh, some of the songs that are on this bootleg from 1973, uh, and I want to share a little bit about how I got a hold of this. So in 1998, I was with the Christian band, and we were, um, you know, we were in Southern California. I lived in, in Irvine at the time, and I decided to go to a guitar center in Lake Forest. And as I got to looking around at the guitars, I met the guy that worked there, and we got to talking. And come to find out, we had the same interest in music, and it was really, um, I, I got to talking about all the Maranatha music and the label and my collection of records that I had. Um, I have been collecting uh, gospel music since I was a teenager, since I became a Christian. And uh, what you see in my collection behind me is pretty much like 99%. There's some stuff in the basement and some boxes. There's some cassettes and CDs all over the house. But uh, anyway, we got to talking about Christian music. He shared with me a little bit about the fact that he was in this band called The Road Home. I believe it was actually Phil Alardo, and my, if my memory serves me correctly, um, and I, you know, at the time of this recording right now, I believe Phil is still alive. So if he ever sees this video, thank you so much for this cassette. I thank you for the music you guys produced. Uh, so anyway, we got to talking about music. We got to talking about Maranatha. He told me about uh, being in the band, The Road Home. I had a band. He invited us to play at the church where he was at. And long story short, I gave him a copy of a cassette tape of my band. He gave me a cassette tape of his band. And it's been sitting in my in my uh, storage, in my basement, in storage units uh, in garages for the last uh, 22 years, I guess. So we're going to take a listen to that rest of this album here, and I hope you enjoy it. Again, I know that uh, that this is kind of a new thing if you've never listened to gospel music before, and in particular this, because there's almost like a southern rock, southern gospel feel to the road home. And um, what I'm really excited about in regards to this album, in regards to this cassette right here, is that um, I don't know if I'm the only person on the planet that has a copy of this music. And why that's exciting to me is because, uh, as we just kind of looked over, The Road Home released a couple songs. They've got some a couple non-Christian songs. They've got a couple gospel songs. There were songs written by Bill later in his life after he died. But this cassette actually has four or five songs, I lost count, of songs that have never been recorded or released, as far as I'm aware of, on a major label. So... Uh, this guy is Bill is really respected and really um, you know his music is enjoyed by a lot of people that that know Christian music, and um, so to have a copy of songs that are maybe this is the only one in existence that's kind of cool, and um, and so let this be a, a a moment where we preserve what God has done through His people and through songwriting and through the church through the years, as we take a listen to some of the tracks on here. All right, so let's get started. The first track is the song Since I Met Jesus, and I will note that I won't play all the songs because I'm going to link them uh, in, in, uh, on the YouTube page where you can listen to all the songs. But just so you know, it is a cassette tape. Um, I, said I was handed to it 25 years after it was recorded. There is some sound issues with the first couple songs. For instance, uh, Since I Met Jesus is only playing in my left ear pretty much, uh, and, and it gets the volume goes up and down with the highs and the lows. But uh, we won't spend too much time on this song because, like I said, it's you can get Maranatha 4, you can Google it, you can listen to it on, uh, on YouTube or whatever, and uh, you can listen to that song. So that's the album starts with Since I Met Jesus. Okay, great song. All right. The second song on this album is a song called 
God Loves Country Music. And as I mentioned, that's the album that you see hanging out right behind me here uh, on my, uh, my right shoulder. Now, the difference between what this version, this live version, and the version that is on the Maranatha release, which came out in 1981, is that there's actually a second chorus that is different than the official release. So we'll listen to that in a minute. We're going to jump in in the middle of verse 2, and we'll listen through to the end of that second verse, second chorus. So now is where we get into a different verse, different chorus. That's a great line. That God, you know, Jesus paid your way to heaven. You can't work your way into heaven even by doing overtime. So a really cool line there talking about the love of Christ and how he came and died for our sins. And here's the thing. Here's the thing about this, um, what we call early contemporary Christian music, early CCM, is that there was no, there was no confusion about what they were singing about, right? They were talking about Christ. There were a couple guys like Daniel Amos and Larry Norman who used a lot of imagery and things like that. But guys like uh, Second Chapter of Acts, Barry McGuire, uh, The Road Home, a lot of the Maranatha music uh, musicians, it was pretty straight and narrow. You knew what they were talking about. You knew that they were talking about Jesus. Uh, and for instance, this next track off the live bootleg is another example of that. I've titled this song, uh, Walking with the Lord. So you think there's a heaven and a hell If you're good, you go here If you're bad, you go there Where do you go if you're so, so All in between And he said, man, I've had it up to here So that song, uh, I, I forgot to mention, I don't actually know what the name of most of these songs are other than Since I Met Jesus, uh, God Loves Country Music, and Psalm 5, which we'll hear in a minute. So um, this song I've just labeled Walking with the Lord because later on in the song, um, there's just a, a chorus and an extended ending where they invite the, uh, the audience to sing along with them. So let's kind of listen to that right now as we uh, look at the rest, listen to the rest of this song. And thank you, Jesus. It's you that I adore. Ain't it heaven? Walking with the Lord. Come on, everybody sing with us. Jesus. There you go. So a great song, a little outro there. It goes on for about two minutes, just uh, having the, the audience sing along with them. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, isn't it great walking with the Lord? And again, it's just true, right? Like all these songs are straightforward about just about Jesus, about the gospel, about walking with the Lord. And uh, this next song we're going to listen to, uh, you know, I, I believe the um, I've just titled this song, How Much They Need Jesus, How Much They Need Salvation. This is a, this is a great uh, little song where, where Bill Sprouse sings about superstars and even 
those people who are shining brightest in our culture, you know, pop stars, even they need the love of Jesus Christ in their life. And um, I'm going to let this song play a little bit longer than the other ones uh, because it's, um, it's pretty interesting to me. Uh, the verses, he talks about, um, he just names people by name. Um, John Lennon. I believe he speaks about Leon Russell, um, Stevie Wonder, and I think he's talking about Billy Preston. So these were all big hit makers during, during the time of the 70s. And so it's, it's interesting how this song is a prayer for them, uh, and by extension, uh, a prayer that all of us would have a heart for the lost and a heart for those who don't know Christ, who don't know the Lord. So let's give that a listen. Um, as I said, this is a song uh, I'm just entitled entitling how much they need salvation. This is uh, one of my favorite tracks from the bootleg. Man, that's so powerful. Again, there's just the heart for the lost. It's just, it's so cool to listen to this song, thinking about um, just the imagery and the prayer that uh, Bill is singing here and how much more music that we don't know that he could have written or that, that God would have used him throughout the years. But of course, the Lord took him home at, at uh, I think, 25 or 26. Um, we're going to listen to this, the verse of this song where he, uh, where he starts uh, calling out uh, people by name and their their need for Christ. John Lennon. I really must confess the Beatles really won my heart. But Jesus has it now. Mm, that's good. And I know somehow he would heal the John and give you a new star. You know, we are never too far away from the love of God. Praise God. That's a great track. Uh, well, let's listen to the second verse, the second, third verse of this song, because he does talk about a couple other folks here. And uh, just, just listen how he, how he has a prayer for them also to come to know the Lord. I believe it's Billy Preston. I'm not sure. There 
there you go. Great song, great track, uh, great heart, great message. And uh, again, can you imagine what other songs Bill would have been able to write if, uh, or sing at least. I don't even know if he wrote these songs, but at least he's singing them with such passion and such heart that you feel uh, every lyric, you feel every, um, every, every word he's saying. Uh, he's just singing with such passion and stuff. So praise God for that. Hey, we're going to move on to the next track. Uh, this next track is a song I've just titled Jesus, I Love You. It's got a little bit of a funk drive to it. Uh, you know, the thing about The Road Home in their original album, uh, in their album, uh, Peaceful Children, is that Bill, Bill didn't, wasn't the only one who sang. Some of the other people sang. D here sang, uh, and some of the other folks did. So in this next track, um, just like in the previous one, um, Bill is not the lead singer, but it definitely is um, got a little funk, little groove to it. There you go. It's nice. Every time I think of how much my Lord Jesus loves me, I get all choked up inside because he's the one that ended my misery he's the one that set me free that's a good jam it reminds me of chuck butler if you know who he is he was also uh in the band parable but just the uh that like funk groove just the vocal really chuck butler to me here jesus i love you that's good and i know all right the next track on the bootleg is a song called uh, thank you lord for loving me getting another ballad by bill that he just pours his heart out to the Lord, thanking God for salvation and for the love of Christ. So let's give that one a spin. Lord Jesus said to me, No greater love does a man have for his friend. I laid down my life Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Great song. This next track is uh, what I've just titled We'll All Live Together. It starts out kind of mellow, kind of chill. I really like this song because of the uh, guitar work and uh, and just the story of, of Jesus Christ coming to earth. Uh, again, this isn't sung by Bill Sprouse. This is sung by one of the other guys in the band. And um, let's give a listen to this here. Very folksy here in this song. song goes on to talk about uh, the kingdom of God and how we'll live together with him so a great song beautiful lyric beautiful guitar playing on that one the next song on this bootleg is the classic Psalm 5 which I mentioned already was released on Maranatha 5 and um, this this is an interesting track to me because it's a uh, recording if this is an accurate recording from 1973 that means that um, uh, you know, this was sung a couple years at least, or at least a year before it was recorded. 
and uh, before P Bill passed away and before it was released on Maranatha 5. So this song is available on many formats, but as they sing the song, uh, you can hear the band, you know, inviting the congregation to sing along, to clap along towards the end. So let's just give a little listen to it here, because again, you can hear it in other, other formats, but let's just listen. Yeah, so at that, at that point, I'm not sure how, how new the song was, how popular it was. He invites the, the crowd to sing along. I'm not sure where this album was recorded. It definitely is uh, labeled as 122373. Uh, um, so it, this may have, may have been a fairly new song at the time. I'm not sure. But we know that it went on to be a classic praise song and one that, of course, is straight from the scriptures. This bootleg closes out with a song called Sing Me a Song About Jesus. And uh, this is a song that you would, you, you would expect to hear on a Southern Gospel album, maybe The Gathers or something like that. And again, just through researching, I wasn't able to find anything related to this song recorded by another artist. So I'm assuming this was written by, by the band. Um, so let's give that a yeah, listen. It starts off kind of quick. This is classic Southern Gospel, almost uh, Andre Crouch-ish, I don't know, you know, Gathers, um, that Southern feel to it that, uh, anyway, let's listen. You hear the people in the background coughing. Sing me a song about Jesus. The name I love to hear. The one who so mercifully saved. Is that true in your life? You know, these gospel songs, this early contemporary Christian music, really had the emphasis about knowing God, knowing Jesus. And um, there's there's this there's this thing that happens from from when you listen to Peaceful Children by the Road Home, and you listen to a song like this, Sing Me a Song About Jesus. There's something that happens when you realize that that. The song Peaceful Children is all about finding peace in self, finding peace in Eastern religions. But yet by the time we get to Since I Met Jesus, by the time we get to Psalm 5, even when other people are singing their songs like Shotgun Angel or God Loves Country Music, there's, there's a shift that's happened, a change where there's peace and there's joy in Jesus Christ. And that, that's where ultimately where our peace is found. And that's why I love this gospel music that's why i have a large collection of gospel music behind me um, because there's just some there's truth to it right and god is love and he sent jesus christ to die for us for our sins and these songs particularly here by the road home man it's a snapshot a snapshot a small snapshot of, of christian music history you know this this band was only around for about two years i guess in christian two maybe three years but yet they had such an impact through Psalm 5 and some of their other songs. And uh, to be able to hear this recording from this bootleg, uh, it's, a, it's a blessing and a privilege. And so 
Um, if you were in any way connected with the band, uh, if you're the record label or whoever you may be, uh, and you would like this a copy of this or it needs to get in the right hands to be put out in the public, uh, you can let me know in the comments. And uh, it would be a blessing to get that into the right hands. But if not, we have it preserved here on this video. And there will be other videos that will have each of the tracks uh, listed for you that you can listen to. Uh, so you don't have to hear my commentary over them. You can just listen to them and worship with them. All right. If you were a member of the band or if you're in any of those Christian bands in the early 70s, let me tell you, I'm a fanboy and I appreciate what you guys have done. Guys and girls have done and you sang and uh, you've encouraged me in my faith. And uh, I'm happy that the first vlog that I was able to do here, after thinking about it for many years, uh, we can dedicate to Jesus and to his ministry. Let's sing a song about Jesus. Let's sing a song about our Savior. Let's keep doing it. Let's not stop. Let's worship him. I'm going to finish off this video by listening to the rest of the band. And uh, well, I'll take a look at some of the liner notes here in the albums. So God bless you. Thanks for sticking around. To God be the glory. <laughs>